So we heard you at your introductory press conference describe your initial priorities and um, getting players on the team comfortable with you in addition to keep retaining all the recruits that you could. How well do you feel like you, how close have you come to doing what you wanted to do in these last couple of weeks? I think we, um, we kind of accomplished what we wanted to, Don. At the very beginning, what we did is we tried to get around our players, you know, right out of the gate. And we spent, you know, uh, a few days um, more here in this complex before we went out on the road in an effort to meet, continue to share our goals and our vision um, for the program and kind of who we're going to be. Um, not, not all of the how we're going to do it, but really the who. And just getting a chance to be around them. Um, offense and defensive uh, meetings. Uh, got some of the, when I got the position guys in here on offense, especially, um, we got a chance to be around them. So it's not um, near what you want, but I, you know, just for the short time being, we spent a little bit more time here before we went on the road um, to recruit. And obviously, it's it's you know here we are 48 hours in front of signing date, and it's gone really good. There's been a tremendous reception out there and, and a vibe um, just with. Um, our staff coming in, and I think the direction that we're hoping to take the program, but a great vibe with the high school coaches first and foremost, and I've gotten a chance to rekindle a lot of those relationships, but uh, we've kept a lot of the, the guys committed and, and kind of recommitted them, and it was kind of by our choice and their choice, so it feels like it's a little bit um, um, mutual, I think, in that regards, but um, I think it's been a good good start so far. What's your timeline for filling out your staff since you have yesterday? As far as we know. <laughs> have you, have you, do you have a full staff? No, 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 I've got three more guys right. on a full staff and then several off the field positions. My hope would be, my hope would be to be completely done, um, you know, the first week of January when we, the staff, when we kind of get back. So um, before you go to the, before the It is, but, right? but the reality is that that may not happen. You know, we may need. Um, to use the convention for a couple more interviews or something like that. So that that's my hope. Sometimes that doesn't happen, but I would like to have the off the field positions done um, so we can get, you know, internally, we can get cranking on recruiting in 2020s and, and spring ball and all those kind of things. Um, but there may be maybe one of those staff positions that we may need to take a little time. And what are your, kind of going back, who would you say your biggest influences are? I know when I look at that, your bio, you, you obviously spent a lot of years with Charlie Weatherby and also with Steve Cragthorpe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don, probably all the guys that I've been around, I think I've taken different things from all those coaches. Charlie Weatherby gave me my first scholarship, uh, first scholarship, only <laughs> scholarship to play ball at, at Utah State and then gave me my first job and hired me at the Naval Academy and was an early influence in my life. Steve Cragthorpe, I coached for him in Tulsa. Um, you know, Steve is a tremendous organizer. He's a great people person. Um, I saw a model of how to completely flip a program um, from, you know, I think it was something like one in 20, one in 21. And then the first year we won eight. And then two years later, we're conference USA champions and um, three bowl games out of four years. And, and that was a model uh, that is, you know, kind of embedded in my head of how we did that. And that was a lot of local recruiting and, how we coached them hard and what we did in the off season. In the two years I spent with Rocky Long, um, I, did, I think it's just built on one word and that's toughness. That's Rocky, it's tough. And it's from every position on the team, what we did in the off season. There's some things I've taken from Coach Long and then um, you know, being around Gary Anderson for two years. Um, Gary's a guy that has, uh, I, I will say this real matter of factly, I, I thought I, did a great job of establishing relationships with players and building trust and loving on guys and I didn't mean you're your best friend by any means, but it's a tough love. Gary took it to another level. Um, I learned a lot on uh, relationships and seeing how um, that can um, infect and infuse a team um, when guys will play hard for you. Um, but there was also an element at Utah State of a toughness, blue collar, work ethic that I think we're going to bring a lot of those elements here uh, to Tech. And you have a program that's been to uh, has been to some bowls recently, but also has had three losing seasons, had you know, six and seven a year last year. How do you 
What's your idea on how to get it over the hump? Yeah. From, well, from what you, you just said a moment ago, you yeah. observed how to change a culture under Coach Craig's so That's right. I think the biggest thing you got to do is is when you're established, you got to establish your identity and the culture that you're going to have in your program and what you're going to recruit to, um, what you're going to expect out of your players. And I always talk about um, what we do and I talk about how we do it. And so the what we do is what we do in the off season in terms of strength and conditioning our off season program. I believe you become tough in January, February, June, July. Physically tough and mentally tough. Um, what we do on offense, which is, I believe is unique. What we do on defense now in a spread offensive world we all live in, especially in this league. And how we attempt to coach the defense, how we evaluate the defense, how we praise and reward the defense. And um, the idea of playing great defense has changed um, from 10 years ago. It's not even close. Um, and uh, it's the how you do how you do all that. And then it's the character development, the leadership development off the field, the culture that you're trying to create. That's the stuff that has to be done. And you gotta be a champion in those areas before you're ever a champion on the field. So to me, there's things in place that have to get set how we're gonna act in school, how we're gonna act off the field, and the player-led leadership, the player accountability. Yes, there's coach-to-player accountability, but there's also player-to-player. -player. And once that happens, special things can happen if you have the right talent in place. So you have all those plans. So I think, how do you take it from good to great? You've gotta get the infrastructure inside right, and we're gonna implement what we've done here. Um, we're gonna implement here what we've done and what we're coming with. And the thing that gives me confidence is it's still about the people. It's a people-driven business and the people that I'm able to bring with me that as we've done this plan together, okay, I think are the keys to success is the people that are around here touching our players on an everyday basis. Uh, going back to when you were a player uh, at, at this question, to what extent or in what way did your playing career shape who you are as a coach? And, Correct me if I'm wrong, but you you were a quarterback, but you, did you also kind of maybe lose the job and then you did? Yeah, I think, to... Don, that's a, no, that's a great question because I think it shaped who I am as a coach and I think it probably shaped a little bit who I am as a person because um, I've been the redshirt quarterback, I've been the backup quarterback, I've been the starter, the starter that broke records, uh, the starter that got benched, booed, and then come back and then you know, almost transferring and leaving uh, before my senior year, but I was named captain. So I felt that there was a, you know, a little bit of a loyalty factor there to my teammates and in Utah State. And uh, my senior year, I was the backup quarterback. I was the nickel, played on all four special teams and the holder. I was the master of all the jack of all trades, the master of none. Um, but you're a special but I think, teams guy and yeah. you're primarily a defensive back your senior year. Yeah, and the, I was the backup quarterback. And so, um, there were, I mean, in the middle of practice, I changed shoulder pads to throw and to play defense, and it was crazy um, under John L. Smith. Bobby Petrino was the offense coordinator. Um, I, what I'm getting at is I faced adversity in a little bit of a different way, um, having success, getting booed. Um, Kind of like the Utah State years, the last four or five years, three or four years. I mean, to be real with you, I mean, when you face that adversity and that that um, things that didn't go so right, to me, failure is just when you don't get back up and fight and change. And um, that I think I learned that as a player, and I think that's probably melted over into my coaching career a little bit. And you face those kind of things, um, and. Uh, you know, I think it gives you confidence that you can face it and change things in the future. But, um, you know, you come out of that deal and you have success. And But for me as a player, um, when you're an average college player, um, you get into coaching real quick. Um, I wasn't going to play at the next level. So uh, your, uh, your best year, best times as a quarterback was when, and you, you mentioned Boo twice. So <laughs> what, sounds like you remember distinctly what, what game or games you're talking oh. about there. So if your best time as a quarterback was when, and your worst time, as low as low as a quarterback um, was when? Oh, best time as a quarterback, probably, uh, you know, you remember, you know, uh, I don't know, I remember catching a touchdown pass to Mexico State game through two or three. That was a good win. It was a team win and, and catching a touchdown, that was pretty cool. 
Um, that was your what year? That was my sophomore year. I mean, you know, you remember your first, right? Your first completion as a redshirt freshman, your first touchdown for me, it was against Utah, 1994. They were a really good team. They had Luther Ellis and some of those guys. Chasing it. Uh, oh man, <laughs> uh, Luther Ellis was all whack after yeah. that game. He didn't have to play the rest of the year. He sacked me so many times. But, you know, I remember those touchdowns and a quarter against Vegas after I got benched for three quarters and then the fourth quarter against Vegas. Um, you know, you remember some of those times, and um, I remember a game my senior year that I completed a pass or two. I don't remember exactly. I'm sure somebody's going to look it up. Um, I completed a ball, made tackles on defense, played all four special teams, and held on the field goal team. So that was like the first time that had been done at some point in Utah State's history. So I guess that was cool. But it sounds like you can probably, with that range of experiences, you can probably relate to... I can a lot of different guys in our program. Right. I can and, and I tell guys I know what it's like to redshirt. Um, you know, I know what it's like to be away from home and be homesick. Um, I've had that, I've experienced that. Um, I've experienced success. I've experienced getting booed and benched like I mentioned and then um, the leadership role that I had as a senior. And, um, you know, I, I've experienced all that. And then um, I also talk about this, Don. I'm a product of a dream that's been altered Okay, my dream was to play first at the University of Oklahoma. That's how I grew up. As a quarterback. Uh, yeah, as a quarterback. Okay, my dream was to play in the NFL. Okay, once you figure out that's not happening, okay, what are you gonna do in life? Well, for me, I altered my dream. I went to Utah State, I'm gonna go throw the ball, I'm gonna play for Jim Zorn, I'm gonna play for Bobby Petrino, which is what happened. And I look back on it now as a coach and go, wow, that actually was pretty positive in my life because I got to play for two of the better or best quarterback coaches in the country. And that's an arguable statement, but still to this day, Jim Zorn and Bobby Petrino, different guys, different personalities, different ways to coaches, to coach, but there's things they both taught me that I've learned and been able to hand down to quarterbacks that I believe are time tested. And so I am a product of that, but I'm also a product of an altered dream that um, you know became a head coach at his alma mater and then I'm in the Big 12 now. And you said you touched on altered dreams, so kind of uh, fast forwarding ahead, what was the experience or kind of water, kind of when the light bulb went off that coaching is what you want to do? Coaching well, is what you want to be? Are you saying when did that light when, bulb? When did that, yeah, when did that happen? Or, or My senior year. Uh, I think I kind of figured that out. Um, you know, the competitive nature, the Saturdays, the camaraderie with the guys. I didn't, I didn't want to lose it. I didn't want to, I didn't, I was scared of not having that anymore. And so I thought coaching was going to be the next best thing. And so I'm going to go chase a dream. And, you know, um, I got a chance to go to the Naval Academy and I just gave myself a goal, Don. And I said, five years, I'll give myself five years. If I can't become a full-time coach in five years, then I'm out. Do something else, use my uh, marketing degree and go get a job in the business world. And, I was a GA, I was a, uh, the JV head coach. I uh, coached the fullbacks in an option offense um, under, with Kenny Nimatololo, who's now the, still the head coach. He was the offense coordinator at the time, the, off, the head coach at Navy. Um, and then my fifth year, I became a receivers coach. So you and then we got fired. <laughs> Altered dream, right? Here we go again. <laughs> And at that point, when I got fired, when I got fired, we got fired. Head coach got fired. Everybody gets fired, right? That's just that's the nature of the beast, and that's what we all signed up for. Um, Jen was pregnant with Jaden, our, our firstborn, and so boom, that's 30 days. And when you're like the insurance is done too, yeah, then you better figure life out real, real quick. Got pregnant wife and no job, no insurance coming up. So here we go. So that's another story for another day. But what? Uh, when did you know? Obviously. We had heard that Kirby was very interested in you, and you were a top target of his. When did you? When find was that? somebody gonna tell me that? Because <laughs> I hadn't heard that. <laughs> when did you become aware of that? That Sunday. Yeah, when he reached out for the first time, and I answered the call. So a Sunday afternoon, and yeah, yeah, and said, "Want to?" Uh, well, what did he convey to you in that first call? Just of his interest, um, and was curious if there was mutual interest and. In, I said, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. And then, you know, we had a phone call and, you know, a phone interview, if you will, or just getting to know you. And, um, 
You know we played against each other, did you know that? Uh, we had that talk, 1992. Okay. He was on a uh, team at Kansas State, he was playing special teams. They came to Logan, I had a hat and clipboard holding, you know, I was the red shirt, right down the plays on the sidelines and the Aggies beat the Wildcats in Logan, Utah in 1992, big win over a big eight team. Wow. So, yeah, it was a big one for and us. They were already starting to get kind of turn, get it turned around at that point, too. Yeah. Pretty quick. You'll have to ask him what he recalls about that game. <laughs> <laughs> I think he recalls all the practices after the week after is what he remembers. Probably, <laughs> probably yeah. <laughs>